All right, now I look back and say, how do we apply this to creators publishing? What were the elements? Okay, it started with a burning desire. I saw that picture of Guy Mirzuk, and that's what I wanted ahead of everything. That burning desire. So from, from what we need before this week is over, all of you need to figure out what is your burning desire within creators publishing so that it, it really gets you excited. So it doesn't feel like work when you come to it. All right, and the next step I did was to get expert advice and to immerse myself in the work, to learn as much as I could by reading those magazines, talking to Rock Stonewall, talking to other, Bill Sino, Sergio Oliva, uh, and later Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombo and other people who became, they, they had what I wanted. So I would interview them. How did you do it? What do I do? What do I need to do? And so we need expert advice. That's something we have to think about. Should we hire the president of a book publishing company to come in and, and run this for us? Or do we just keep reading and learning on our own and keep experimenting? We, it's worth, you know, examining. Something we were sort of weighing back and forth. A third thing that, that helped lead to success was the environment. See, when I was in Chicago, when I quit, that environment was such I had no control over my schedule. Um, Nobody shared my interest. If I went, in those days, remember in the early 60s, if you went to a hotel, they never had a gym. No hotel ever had a gym. If you go to, if it, let's say in my early 30s, I hadn't been in Santa Monica. Let's say I'd been in Chicago or Washington, D.C. or Baltimore or, or Richmond, some of the cities I lived in, and I wanted to work out. What do you do? You go to a holiday health club. You go to a, a YMCA where the, the, it's like a dungeon, a basement. Nobody's training hard. People um, are talking about the TV show they saw last night. Uh, it's very hard to be focused and work out if you're in an environment that's, that's negative or non-reinforcing. Now, in contrast, you go to Gold's Gym or World Gym and you've got these people who all share the same interest and everybody's working hard, everybody's focused. Ah, then you, it's just so easy to go with the flow. Well, that's the kind of environment we need to create for creators publishing where we're all on the same page and we're all working toward these successes, these bestsellers that we're going to continue to publish. Um, positive encouragement, that's huge. The Franco thing, I mean, that I can't tell you what that meant. And so I think all of us need, and especially me, we need to look for positive, what you guys are doing right, and to praise, and to, uh, but it can't just be, you know, totally open-ended. I mean, it's one thing. Angeline paid a nice compliment to Melissa when Pete and Angeline and I were in my office yesterday. She said that when, when Melissa complimented her, it, it meant a lot because Melissa doesn't just compliment. So, I mean, that's, that's important too. Goals. Let's talk about goals. Let's say that, um, that you were asked to be in a movie that you knew 30 million people were going to see and you had to wear a bathing suit and you had 30 days to get ready for it. Every one of us would diet, work out, we do everything possible in 30 days to look good in a bathing suit. So if you have a short-term goal like that, that's just so overwhelming and compelling, you, you don't have to think about it, you just do it. Um, now, you can't, you know, that, that's a little bit artificial and, and none of us probably is going to be asked to be in a movie seen by 30 million people in a month. But nonetheless, the more you can sort of play with your mind and set up short-term as well as long-term goals. I know this afternoon Jack has us, we're going to do vision boards where we envision what we want and so on. It's the same kind of thing. And, and But my recommendation is, is do it big picture but also short-term. And that's what we need to do with our publishing. And then finally, what happens is you get the good habits. The, it just becomes like, like automatic, like eating breakfast, like going to sleep, like brushing your teeth, like taking a shower workouts uh, or success in publishing, just like in syndication, we, we have that down. We're, we have good habits for syndicated columnists, syndicated cartoonists. We know how to sell them, we know how to promote them, we know how to edit them, we know how to distribute them. And you just, you know, I'm sure we can fine tune, uh, but we get, once you get it down, then you get it down. I mean, this was 60 years old. So my workouts are, are just a part of my life that are, so that, that inspiration I had at age 12 and this journey to get to where I am and my goal, like I say, is to live to 98 and continue working out six hours a week on average and eating a sensible diet. 
and living a life with joy and love and feeling happy, healthy, and terrific. So that's it. Thank you. If anybody wants to ask questions, I'm happy to answer them. Why do you think you've lost the desire to work out at whatever point you did, 13, 14? Well, I think it was feeling discouraged because my friends were, had more, some of my friends had more muscle than me and they never had lifted a weight. Um, but it was also the environment and I didn't have control of my schedule. And I didn't understand goal setting and how I could take control. And, you know, when you're 13, 14, 15, you're shoved off to high school and you don't really have a lot of control. So I think that was the answer, those things. Whereas in my 30s, I, I could control all of that. And I had a really busy job at, at, when I was doing the bodybuilding. So I had to, that got into time management. Like we talked, you know, about how do we do syndication and book publishing. We just have to organize our time that way. And different people do it different ways. Like Simone said she likes to repeat, so they like one day a week to devote to book publishing. Margot said she'd rather uh, multitask and, and combine it within, this, within the week. Either way is fine. Um, it's just whatever works for you. I wonder if you could do a revised edition of the Businessman's Business Person's Guide to Shaping Up, you know, a, a more up to date one. Talk to Franco. It's his book. I just contributed to it. You contributed. Yeah. So, no, I don't, I've thought about this, but I don't want to write a book on, on how I work out because I think that's very personal. I remember years ago um, when Sarah was about, I think she was in college. And, um, no, she was just out of college and she had hired a personal trainer. And the personal trainer said, you need 20 minutes of uh, stretching, or car 20 minutes of cardio, then 20 minutes of stretching, then 20 minutes of weights, or whatever it was, to get the ideal workout. And she said, Dad, you've been working out your whole life. Um, what do you think is the ideal workout? And or what is the best workout? And I thought about it. And I... I said, you know what, Sarah, the best workout's the one you like enough to keep doing it. That's the key. Like Brian, her husband, is a runner and a swimmer. He likes that. Jack, for a while, did triathlons. Now he does cross training or crossfit or, you know, different workout. Whatever. Um, Jessica does yoga. Sarah did yoga. Soul Cycle is her new thing. I think Sheila's doing Soul Cycle or somebody is. Or whatever. Kickboxing. We all do different things. Whatever you like enough to keep doing it. Um, I think that's the most important thing, so you stay motivated. The way I judge a gym and a workout routine is by the clock. If 20 minutes feels like five hours, I got a bad routine or a bad gym. If five hours feels like 20 minutes, I got a great routine and a great gym. It, it, that's, you know, time flies when you're having fun, and if you don't look at the clock and you're having a good time and you feel terrific, then you know you've got a good routine and a good gym. It's the same with work. That's the same with this, the same with life. Yes, time flies when you're having fun, and if you're not having fun and everything drag, you know, if things are dragging, then you know it's not good. But like I say, I could take the same story and apply it to creator syndicate. The starting with the burning desire, creating an environment that support or work hard. I mean, all of this includes. This is an amazing amount of hard work. But if you're in the flow, you feel in the zone, you don't, it doesn't feel like hard work. It just, it just feels natural. And that's what the environment we are trying to create at Creators. So, thank you very much. <laughs>